descending to the surface of our world to test the force of gravity. After contemplating a few locations, I've decided the best is uh, out here in the Mojave Desert along the Californian Aqueduct, an excellent location as you will see shortly. Here we are on the surface folks, I parked over there and I walked along this walkway by the aqueduct and from Google Earth this surface is uh, at the same elevation. Uh, it does not slope, um, only the water flows down this trough, the aqueduct. Uh, but this walkway is actually level and straight for you know a few miles and then there's another you know pump station um, it was a bit windy but here's my instrument a telescope and a high accuracy uh, inclinometer 0.001 degree resolution with such accuracy I can carry out this experiment in a shorter distance I don't have to walk with all this gear for uh, too long of a distance. Here's a closer look at the instrument I'll be using. Um, it's a 480 millimeter focal length refractor telescope that I'll be using to um, sight objects in the distance through the infrared camera Alpha 6000 converted to 830 nanometers. And I'll be using the zoom feature on that to really zoom in and align that telescope. And then I'll be measuring the inclination of the telescope with the ultra high resolution inclinometer. Here's the theory. I'll be measuring the divergence of the gravitational vector. Our theory says that we live on a ball and gravity radiates out from the center. So if I move along a straight line on the surface, the angle that the gravitational vector makes with that straight line will change from place to place. If the Earth is flat, then theta 1 will equal theta 2 and also equal to theta 3. In other words, the gravity vectors will be parallel and they will not diverge away from some imagined center of the planet. To minimize the errors due to surface uh, flatness or lack thereof, we need to align the telescope to a distant uh, target. And here I've calculated that for a resolution of 0.001 degrees at 54 miles, which is where I've sighted a good target, the variation can be up to 5 feet and we would still be under the measurement error of the inclinometer. So the aqueduct actually is, a, is quite a flat surface, very less than that. So I have pretty much eliminated the uh, contribution to the surface uh, variation. Now here you can see uh, where I've parked and then I've walked from there and aligned the telescope at six different locations labeled as uh, S1 through S6. Now the horizontal uh, variation there is about uh, one mile, slightly over one mile. This location by the aqueduct is perfect because it is a flat level surface and also because we are high above the desert floor so we're not sighting through the turbulent uh, air due to uh, heat gradients uh, temperature gradients above the 
desert floor. So I am really excited about this location. Now, here's how well I can sight an object with a telescope and by zooming in on the camera. I have chosen the Quartzite Mountain about 54 miles away because it has some antennas on top. And uh, I can pretty much align it to about 0.002 degrees to be conservative. Maybe slightly better than that. Here I'm walking back from uh, the distant location, Site 6, which was across this road I just passed. This, to, this is to give you an idea of this vast open area and see we're actually high above the desert floor here. And according to Google Earth, this walkway is actually very straight, incredibly straight, probably changing less than one foot per mile. Uh, just incredible. So a perfect ideal location for this experiment. So here's the results um, that I gathered. I recorded uh, the measurements on my uh, phone and initially uh, the first two sites, uh, the number varied quite a bit. And as I went along, I kind of perfected the method. At site 3, I realized I need to pay a little bit more attention to how I align the telescope. So when I walk back, I redid site 1 and 2. Now I discovered that uh, the two parallel surfaces of the rings that hold the telescope, as you can see in the lower right, are not exactly parallel. And so the inclinometer would toggle slightly. As you can see there, you can form two triangles that would be flat, right? Three points specify a, a plane. And so because the two ring surfaces on top were not quite exactly parallel, the inclinometer would toggle slightly. And so then once I discovered that, I paid more attention to it after site 3. So anyway, I went back and redid site 1 and 2. And the first column is the x-axis. So basically rotation about the x-axis. And that's the number we're in, interested in. The y-axis uh, was, you know, somewhat a, a line close to zero, a degree off here and there. Um, but uh, it's really the x-axis measurements that we're after. Now here's the incredible uh, results uh, that become apparent once we plot this data. So the green curve is what the globe says the angle should be, reference to the first point, uh, station one. But notice our data in blue, uh, it, it varies uh, due to the measurement errors, and there's the error bound, but it appears to diverge away from the green line. And if I would carry out this experiment to longer distances, that difference would become even more apparent. So what this means, folks, is that there's no variation in the gravitational vector. All the vectors are parallel. There's no divergence, which really means our world is flat. This is simply incredible, folks. The Earth is flat indeed. It is incredible. It is a mystery, but it's reality. In the lower right corner, I've tabulated the data and I've also calculated the height of the mountain I'm observing based on my measured angle. That's column 3. And notice it's fairly close to the actual height of the mountain which I obtained from uh, Google Earth. About 500 feet off, uh, which is not bad considering the fact that uh, this is not a calibrated, uh, you know, telescope axis relative to uh, this inclinometer. 
but it still works because uh, this um, you know bias in the calibration affects all the points and and this measurement technique is actually really great you know we can even have a slight slope to the surface and it still works as long as it is a optically straight surface we're measuring along and uh, there's no variations in the calibration of the instrument this experiment still works it is really incredible so there you have it folks there is no divergence in the gravity vector thanks for watching this epic presentation folks please comment down below if you've enjoyed it that's what keeps me going folks your comments and uh, support so thanks again and god bless you all stay tuned for more incredible uh, content coming your way god bless